Greetings, true believers. It's time for Spoiler Country's Make My Marvel TV. Live from the Smith Tower high over Seattle with your hosts, John, Kenrick, Sumner, and Casey. Welcome to Make My Marvel TV. Here we are. Here we are. Episode five. Oh no, that's that'd be ten. Five of the amazing The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I always want to say um Falcon and the uh I always say Falcon and the Snowman. Every oh yeah, time. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard yeah. A, a, a tongue twister every single time for me. Yeah. Spoiler Country presents Make Mine Marvel TV, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, episode five reaction right now let's do this yeah let's get it done so i'm andrew sumner and this is kenrick reagan is it regan or reagan mate i've just realized Re- it regan I, I don't know why i even asked you that because i know it's regan yeah i'm trying to turn you into an ex-president of the u.s you know boom you know hey. the guy the guy who deregulated television and ruined everything for everyone right. television news absolutely got rid of the fair and balanced doctrine thanks thanks so uh, thanks ron here's the number one Wait. thing that ronald reagan in my opinion did the worst of i don't yeah. and, and i don't know all no, there's a lot of potential things to yeah. choose from so the, fascinated the, to hear what it is i think the number one thing he did wrong was he defunded all of those mental institutions effectively putting thousands of of mental patients that need help on the street yeah and it was just I, like wow <laughs> I, I i completely agree also he was uh he was no friend to he was no friend to the uh aids uh medication industry either he he yeah. basically slowed down or he got in the way you know got in the way of um real progress could have been made early on with AIDS and it wasn't. Yeah. You know? And and that's, that's a big legacy from that. Not the only Republican administration to have that legacy either, you know? So, yeah. so but yeah, there's a lot of things you could say about how on earth we started this podcast talking about the Reagan administration. I totally my fault because of the, because of the name thing where, you know, if this was a normal week, we might end up doing 15 minutes on this, right? but it's probably a good idea if we don't, because it's just you and me this week, right? It now, is Rich. just you and I, this is a rare opportunity for you and I just to get together and yeah, and right on greens as they say. Yeah. <laughs> sure, and we have been shooting the breeze for some time before you hit the record button as right. well. That's right. That's right. Putting the world, putting the world to rights as it were, but we're also kind of joined by the ghost of Johnny Horsey, aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, I got him on here with the because I think I believe he's doing kid stuff, which happens okay. a lot with him because he's got, yeah. you know, he's got a brood. Of course, of course. But he he did send some things over about episode five, how he felt, yeah. and um, well, well, yeah, kind of how he felt. You know, the first thing he sent me is. I said, Johnny, uh, I said, we're on. And I said, do you want me to add anything? Like Johnny thinks this, or I have Johnny here by text. He's telling me this. He's like, sure. And the first thing he sends me is Bucky is going to smash Falcon's sister. (laughs) 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 Which was, which I, I laughed quite a bit when, well, when he said that I laughed quite a bit, but watching the show, I was like, oh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. His Falcon's like reaction is like, oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought that whole flirting thing was done very well. You know, it's handled very well. It was done, yeah. it was done in a very, my sister. very amusing way. Uh, to, to flip back off for a second, just yeah. on the overall, uh, what did you think of the episode, Kenrick? I loved it, man. It was a lot of fun. Um, it's, it, they kind of slowed things down, right? Because three yeah. and four is so much action, so much going yeah. on. And this one was like, okay, we need to slow it down and kind of basically show the outcome and the aftermath of what happened in four. And I thought they did a good job. I also enjoyed it and thought it was a necessary down tempo episode dealing with, as you've just said, the consequences of everything that's happened. Yeah. And and setting up where the where the conflict's going to go in the final episode, and then yeah. what's going to happen beyond the final episode. Yeah. Because I, I had for quite some time during the course of this thought, we're going to get to the end of this show and John Walker's not going to exist anymore. 
Right. Uh, and that might still happen, of course, because we don't know how it's all going to go down in the final episode. But I think it might easily be getting set up for him to be a kind of a, a figure, you know, within the ongoing MCU, which I'm perfectly happy about. Yeah. I'm perfectly job for job. I'm perfectly happy for John Walker to become the US agent and to be a thorn in everybody's side. Because right. the thing about him, of course, is the dude's not an out and out villain. You right. know, he's trying to do the right thing in his head. And um, but I thought it was to cut to to discuss one of the big revelations of the episode, the big revelation of the episode, which is uh, the existence of um, of a Contessa of Val. Yeah. Played by none other than uh, Julia Lewis Dreyfus, which I yeah. just thought was fantastic. Yeah. Did not expect to see her when she it, me walked. Me neither. I was, oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> me neither. I, and it struck me that one of the things that they might be doing there, because it's only one possible outcome that she could be a version of Madame Hydra, because yeah. Val, Val mainly has spent most of her uh, Marvel history not being a bad guy not being, you know, one of the villains. She spent most of her time being, you know, a high-level black, op, black ops type alongside Fury. And, yeah. of course, it was originally introduced by Jim Steranko to be to serve time as Fury's girlfriend. That's who she was. I didn't even you know. I didn't even know. Um, I don't know that character at all. Oh, mate. I had to look yeah. her up. So uh, what's great about her is yeah. in her original incarnation during the kind of swinging phantasmagoric kaleidoscopic 60s version of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Jim Steranko era, she is featured in um, one of the first um, one of the first kind of allegorical comics pages to suggest that two characters are having sex. And it's her and like it, it's it's her and Fury. Yeah. Jim Stranko, you know, classic Fury. Right. At the end of a kind of mission in his swanky kind of New York apartment, they're sort of making out, but then they like like cut away from the action and it cuts to like um Fury's like a holster with a gun inside hung on the bedpost, you know what I mean? <laughs> and like I had under and that this page of this page by Stranko yeah. is famous for have for being um for, it was famous for being censored by the, you know, some of the editorial people at Marvel dialed down what he did. Right. And, the, and basically the way you see Val, she's sexier in the original drawing than she is in the final version that was published, all this kind of stuff. And when yep. it was reprinted in Marvel UK, she was, uh, cleavage was covered up even more, but she's a, she's a very classically kind of sexy femme fatale on the right. side of good character originally. And uh, kind and, of like what it became in the MCU. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's right. I mean, she's in a in a way, you know, she 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 is absolutely in that kind of space. Except she's more yeah. kind of senior, I guess. That Black Widows are really on the ground operative, right, right. whereas whereas um, Val exists in that kind of Maria Hill kind of hinterland. Right. But something I was thinking they might be doing, they might be doing, and you know, with Marvel, there's a million and one choices, and they can go anywhere they want. Yeah, you never know. She has recently been become one of the the madam hydras have had over the years um and there's it the suggestions that the, her transformation to madam hydra is partially trauma based and there's been a lot of bad shit happened over the years but she has this very intense relationship on and off relationship with fury at the beginning and one of the things i thought they could possibly be doing because they've cast who they've cast yeah. who is a, an actor of a certain age yeah yeah Rather than somebody who's twenty years younger, right? They, they, I, I wonder if they're going to keep the history that she has with Fury intact in the MCU version, which is why they've cast somebody of her experience, and because she could, be, there could believably be scenes between her and Sam Jackson yeah. where they've been partners in the past, and yeah. you totally believe it, and and she has that same you know thousand kilowatt charisma that he's got, so you yeah. can see the two of them. You know, not actively having a relationship, but having been together once. And and I was thinking that to a degree, she might also be a kind of like plan B for Sam Jackson is a man of a certain age these days. Yeah. yeah. And you know, he might be happy to carry on being That's a nice way of feel old. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Is is um I, someone I got from my dad actually, who is sometimes known as we were talking about before for being a touch more blunt. But yeah, a man of a certain age, that's one of his. Um I'm going to use that. And, I get. And uh, another good one, right? That a few people get this reference when I say it is 
up there in the paint cards, yeah. And yeah. up there in the paint cards is, is a Damon Runyon reference from all these short stories that they made the movie Guys and Dolls out of all these short, humorous short stories about gangster life in Broadway in the 20s and 30s. Yeah. And up there in the paint cards is, you know, when you're referring to a deck of cards, the paint cards are the character cards, the Jack, the Queen, the King. Yeah. So the paint cards are the highest ranking cards. Mm. And up there in the paint card paint cards means you know you, you're not just one three four five six seven eight nine ten it's 11 12 and 13 you're way up there you know and it's yeah. another indicator of old age I that's another you, you said that's that another dad some the saying what's that I, mate i knew what you meant when you said up in the paint card. yeah i didn't understand the reference of it like i knew what yeah. the intent of it was but not the reference that was that's kind of cool i like it yeah i like it i like it a lot as yeah. well um, and and my point about and my point about sam jackson is sam jackson might want to carry on playing Nick Fury till he drops, but I wouldn't a, a, you know, he might drop at some point. You never know, do you? Yeah. And I was thinking one of the things they might have, have thought about is they might have thought about, well, look, if anything ever happens to Fury and we need to put another senior actor with a lot of acting chops, you know, into a role where they're super manipulative, yeah. we could always get, Julia Dreyfus to be Val and yeah. to take on that kind of role of being the ultimate, you know, manipulative like then, spook of the of the of the MCU, and that's entirely possible. So, was she a part of Hydra at some point? Is that why they call her Lady Hydra? In recent years, in comics that I haven't read, to be honest, yeah. she definitely has become Madame Hydra. You yeah. know, the head of Hydra at some point. Yeah. But, but for most of her life, that's not what she's been. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to do that with the. Um... With the with Hydra with her, but then you have to get into. I, I'm just not sure whether the MCU really going to having got so much play out of Hydra to date. Yeah, I'm not sure they're going to go to the uh, to the extremes of actually reviving Hydra when they could do so many other things. Yeah. and you know, Feige doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who massively repeats himself. Do you know what I mean? So why would they set up Hydra again with her as Madame Hydra? Why would they set up Shield again when they've kind of one of the re things they've done really well and interestingly over over the last couple of years since Civil War, since before then, is the whole set of reveals about you know Shield breaking down and Hydra yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And they haven't just gone back in and fixed it and taken the status quo back to normal, which nope. has led to a lot of interesting story choices, right? Right. Right. Well, so, so, so I think yeah, I think she's definitely there for a reason, and they need somebody with her kind of acting chops in the role, which is what they've got. Yeah, I'm, it's curious to see if she's going to be nefarious and sneaky, or nefar or, or sneaky and still trying to be good like Nick Fury. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or, or, because yeah, what she's going to do with John Walker? She's obviously setting no. up to have him either be like you're saying in deep cover and to be that U.S. agent, you know. But I can see him being, um, I can see him going into Hydra, you know, and giving him because they would give him the carte blanche to do the kind to be the kind of person he wants to be. Yeah. The, this whole this whole uh, episode was is really it's it's a really interesting episode because, um, I liked how they dealt with John Walker. You know, I don't like yeah. the fact that I, I feel like he should have gone to. Um, <laughs> It's hard to say. Should he have gone to prison because that guy that he killed was a terrorist? Yeah. You know what I mean? And he had been a part of, of a bunch of stuff. <laughs> you know, I can't get into everything, but he had been a part of a bunch of stuff. And then he, you know, um, the whole thing is, why well, didn't kill him? No, but you're part of the whole crew that did. You know what I mean? You're guilty by association. That's how that's how that's how it usually works. You don't you, you and your buddy don't go to some rob a store and your buddy shoots somebody and and then you go to court and say what well, i didn't kill him yeah you're gonna you might not get the same level you might not get 30 years in prison but you're getting 25 yeah. you know what i'm saying so um that whole thing was is, is interesting i don't know that they should have the way they um that that whole scene of him in front of the senators you know and saying I did what you trained me to do. I was the person you told me to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was a pretty powerful scene. And yeah, it was good. you don't like John Walker. It's You can't like John Walker, but at the same time, you can commiserate with what he was saying and what he's going through. Yeah. I mean, he's not an out and out bad guy. He's not the Red Skull, for well, example. You know, Wyatt he's not is playing him perfectly. 
Yeah, yeah, brilliant. I also love the relationship between him and his wife, which yeah. is a very humanizing element, you know, which is why, you know, which is why you don't, you don't truly know what side of the coin he's going to fall on because he is much more of a career soldier and career soldiers at that level do bad shit. They all do. Yeah. They're not, but he, they're also human beings with families and friends and all that kind of stuff, which is what he has. Yeah. So I think, I think it's very interesting to see where it's, where it's going to go. And um, the, uh, it, the other, the other kind of key things for me about this episode were, because I thought once again, Sebastian Stan and Anthony, Anthony Mackie were both brilliant in this. Episode. Oh God, they're so good. Just so good, but the yeah. both of them. But I I only clicked this week that the um, Latino soldier they keep on running into Torres. was actually Joaquin Torres. I hadn't figured that out oh. beforehand. You yeah. know, I, and I wish I had because it's just the biggest obvious red flag. You know what I mean? You know what's funny is I just got a new text <laughs> yeah. from, from Mr. Uh, Horsley, and he says it's interesting that Bucky also sees the importance of Sam being Cap. The respect for the shield and all and carly has turned the corner from oh wait that's the wrong one i'm sorry guys i'm gonna say yeah. that for later this one is um taurus being able to set up as the new falcon he's seeing taurus yeah. come the new falcon soon uh though in the comics taurus is a mutant hybrid of a human falcon and vampire yes. yeah right i'm really hoping they don't go down that route and they just fucking give him the falcon suit because yeah. the the taurus the, the high the hybrid bird vampire thing doesn't really work particularly well to be honest right. whereas the what I do Torres being the guy the next guy who wears the suit that feels much more believable within this reality they've created yeah 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 it's um well they, they have the new blade guy coming in soon yeah what is it Marshal Ali Yes, yeah, yeah. It's going to be Blade, which is going to be, yeah. I think it'll be fantastic. That guy's a great oh, he, He's great casting. He's a great actor. It's going to be really good. So the, the whole vampire thing is going to happen at some point, but I, I think you're right. I don't want to have a, I, I think it's better to keep Falcon the way, the way Anthony Mackie played him. Yeah, I, I, I just think Blade. it would be too jarring to lean into that whole, the, you know, the meta human side of that particular character. Yeah. I just don't think, just having him suddenly turn up as a bird vampire, I just don't, I hope they don't do that, put it that way. I'd rather he just had a different iteration yeah. of the uniform. And, and the fact that the thing that clued me into that, hang on, this guy, he's got to be someone significant, you know, and then it was the whole, you keep it. So, well, clearly it makes sense if he becomes some version of the, you know, the next Falcon. And yeah, throughout yeah. most of the episode, I thought what was going on is when, um, when Bucky like wants the, the next favor from the Dora Milaje, mm -hmm. I assumed that what he was doing is getting the Falcon armor rebuilt, right? I, I, I and and so when it flipped open, almost the end, I thought, oh, he's getting his Falcon armor back, you yeah. know, but improved with Condon version. But the way that they played that whole beat, it then became quite obvious. Oh, hang on, this has got to be some iteration of the Captain America uniform he's looking at. And then that makes sense with the whole keep the wings thing. I think that's the reason he's taking the whole breath and it's so, it's so portentous when he opens the case. I think that's what he's looking at. We'll get, we'll find out, but do you get me? Do you get me? Kendrick? Yeah, that's awesome. No, I didn't. I was like the whole time. I'm like, what's in that box? What Cause he takes box? it, he takes it, he looks at it and he goes and he takes his breath of resolve. Yep. Yeah. And of course, Bucky wants him to be Captain America, right? So if Bucky's got Wakanda to make some shit for him, it's going to be a version of the Captain America suit, surely. It's got to be. It's got to be. Dude. And it, it might be the Falcon version of it with the wings. Who knows? Who knows? Do you know what I mean? But the, um, God, that scene where he goes back and he talks to the other super soldier. What's his name? The old guy. Isaiah Bradley. Isaiah. Cause, yeah. Oh, because this episode is called Truth. Yeah, which is what that se well, that's what uh, that, that series was called. That, that was, was so powerful, a powerful scene. And when he goes, yeah. "Never let a black man be P Captain America," I was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right in the heart." Yeah, and and they cast that like I said, Carl Lumbly's really good, and they've actually aged him up. He doesn't look that old in reality. Yeah, yeah. you know, they've given him a lot of extra like lines and whatnot. Yeah, but it's it's I, I really liked the fact that they haven't shied away. Um from the kind of American race politics in, in this, in this series. I think and they're talking, yeah. talking head on about all of these issues, which is the right thing to do. I think. Yeah. 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 I think it's, I think it's really good. And it's just funny because you're watching people 
have a different viewpoint of who Captain America was and is. Yeah. You know, and they just see the blonde hair, blue eyed guy and that and being propped up as Captain America. And really, it's because Steve Rogers was just the only person that they would have given that serum to at that time, you know, because he fit all those molds that they needed. I don't think that the scientist, I can never remember Stanley Tucci's character's name, but Stanley Tucci, who is one of my favorite actors of all time, the guy's amazing, but he, uh, oh, Dr. Erskine is that yeah, character's name? Dr. Erskine, yeah. You know, he gave that serum to, to Rogers because of, well, just his protection. The way Rogers was, his, yeah, because of his personality. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that whole scene where he, the, the grenade and he, yeah, he's the grenade, the grenade yeah. and he's like, you know, back up, back up, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think Ursa would have cared about color or cult or background or anything like that. I think he just would have been, this is the right person. Oh, right yeah, person. totally. Yeah, totally. Ers well, Erskine is himself a refugee from Nazi yeah. Germany. Yeah. And, and, you know, and actively rejects like racism yeah, and all exactly. that kind of stuff. And it's yeah. just, it's just interesting to see because. Because Isaiah's viewpoint is based off of his connection and his, um, well, what he went through as an American. His, his treatment, yeah. Yeah, his sure. treatment. And they go through all that stuff. And, and he has a very, and all his points are very valid, you know. But you can see with uh, all the race relations and equal rights movements and all that kind of stuff has impacted Sam a lot. And to yeah. sit there and hear, have somebody tell him these things that they went through in the name of, of justice, in the name of the American government. And then, you know, and here he is with the shield, has everything, and really is should be Captain America. It should never give him that shield up. And now I think he's come to grips with that in that scene. I should have never given this up, you know, because it means more yeah. to, just to him, but to a whole other point of society, you know. And it's, it's it, I, I loved it. I thought they did a great job. Uh, the other thing I, I, I love that Val covered off is what we've talked about a number of times in these podcasts about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. It's, the shield doesn't fucking belong to the government. That's right. You know, it, it's a, it's compl a complete Great scam. Scene. Yeah, and Val. Suggest that, and the fact that she addressed that, what we all know, because they're setting up the fact that, well, Sam's going to have the shield and they're not going to be able to take it off him. Yeah. It doesn't belong to them. Yeah, you know, it was it was Howard Stark Shield, and he gave it to Steve Rogers. It's yep. Steve Rogers to give to anybody else. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. Simple as that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I and, that, cool. and that was a big part of the Stark and Steve Rogers relationship as well. What did you, you know, bring? Go ahead. No, just bringing the shield back on. You know, my father made that shield, and he takes it. Yeah. And he brings it back. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. What did you think of when um, John Walker's walking out of the scene? Uh, from the senator, and they're and they're yelling at him, you know, saying, you know, all this stuff. And but they they the last thing the senator says to him is bring back that shield, you know. I think it says bring back yeah. the shield or whatever. But there's a part of me is like, how do they not know that Sam and and Bucky has taken the shield from him? Because that, you would think that'd be like the first thing he said. They stole my shield. Well, yeah, I, th I think they're going to find out. That's the key, you know. I oh, yeah. And, uh, I think it's going to yeah. be grand fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stan's going to show up and be, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Captain Oh, yeah. America. It's all it's all going to kick off for sure, yeah. I, I mean, uh, the thing I ha really have, I'm interested in about Sam becoming Captain America yeah. is that, is that, and it's something touched upon something we've talked about before, and it's kind of kind of one of the things I've always been curious about him being Captain America in the comics. I love the fact that he is Captain America, yeah. But generally, Captain America is a super soldier who does super soldier things, yeah. So, what, yeah. so basically, is it just going to be that Sam's going to be a non-powered Captain America? In which case, it's going to be very difficult to be that. Yep. Or will he have the Captain America slash hybrid Falcon cost? You know, Falcon costume, which allows him to do all the Falcon stuff while being Captain America, or will he have some kind of exoskeleton, or will they give him the serum? Because I thought at some point when everybody was dicking around with all those serum vials that somehow Sam would end up getting dosed, and that paves the way from being Captain America. I just think I think he's the right person to be Captain America. It's very difficult to be Captain America if you're not enhanced and you're just a regular dude. Yeah, and of course, this is the whole what the whole art with John Walker is about. Yeah. Yep. You know, so I, I'm just very interested to see how that plays out. I feel like if they, if anybody deserves to get the serum, it's, it's probably Sam. 
yeah. that you would be more like it with things. But I, I wonder the whole thing too. It's like, because he's the kind of person that would say, no, I don't want that either. Yeah, no, exactly. You know what I mean? And I'm like, how? Well, I, I, I I, I, okay. <laughs> like, dude, you're fighting yeah. things that are beyond, you know? Something I thought that was going to happen with that final vial. Yeah. And actually what happened was Walker dosed himself with it. Right. But something I thought was going to happen with that final vial is that, uh, that um, Sam was going to get like mortally injured. Yeah. And they had one vial of super soda. So yeah. it's like, fuck it. We better give this to Sam to save his life. Right. Of course, the healing factor kicks in. He survives, and then he is a super soldier. I thought that would have been a good way to do that would it. Be a good way to do it because that's not him putting his hand in the air going, "I'm going to take it." Right. It, right. We would never have had to have crossed well, that take away from him at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right, mate. Yeah. yeah, that would be an interesting way of doing it because it just sets up a lot of things. Like, well, like we just said, I mean, you, you take choice away, and and then he becomes somebody that could actually be believable in something because they're going to have some fight scenes where you're like, you should be getting the shit kicked out of you right now. You know? Yeah. And I'm wondering how they're going to handle that. Now, now mate, did you hit, I, I would love to know how they handle that because I've got no idea, but as always with these guys, the journey is very interesting. So I'm fascinated to see where the next episode is going to go. Yeah. Did you see any of that, any of those memes that came through about a week ago about Baron Zemo dancing? I did. I, I, I thought that was a classically Marvel thing to do. You know, basically all the fans are going, we want to see. So they literally release an hour of footage of outtakes of Daniel Brühl just dancing around. I thought that was great. It was really good. I, and I, I was, I was, you know, it's literally Marvel entertainment that Marvel literally released on YouTube an hour of Zemo dancing. I just thought that's what a great thing to do. Did you, um, I haven't, I didn't see that. I had to go back and look at it. Oh, mate, it's on YouTube. Literally Marvel Entertainment on YouTube. One hour dancing Zemo. <laughs> That's what it is. And it's like basically they took lots of different shots of him dancing. Yeah. And they've just taken all the outtakes and edited it together. With like, with like, um, with his permission. And yeah. it's just on an hour loop. It's oh, really funny. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Were you surprised yeah. that um, Bucky gave up Zemo? To the Dora Milaje. No, no, no. I, didn't. I knew it was going to happen, but we were surprised that it happened in that episode. Yeah, the, uh, I th I think that's very much about A. he. I mean, the great thing about Zemo is he can be used again if needs be. Because yeah. the whole idea about being locked up for life in a, in Wakanda means, oh, no, on the raft rather is. Well, we've already proved the raft is pretty fucking easy to get out of right. if, you've, if, you're, if you're superhuman. So if any of the Avengers or Avengers to be want to go and get hold of Zemo, they can do. Uh, uh, and that gives them the option of going back to Daniel Brawl and using his acting ability whenever they want. Yeah. And it might not be for the next couple of years, but he'll probably return at some point. Yeah, Johnny uh, actually said, said Zemo will probably show up in Black Panther 2. Yeah, I, well, that's that would be a good one for him to like to turn up in because, and, and I, he's definitely a character I miss because I've I've always found that I've always massively enjoyed his performance in each episode he's been in. Yeah, and I think he that that sort of you never know where Zemo is coming from thing. Yeah, and you never really know what's motivating him thing. I think that's fascinating to watch. Well, now that he's killed the the last guy working on the serum, he. Yeah. Basically, as far as we know, all of the vials are destroyed. There's no more yes. serum sitting out there, as far as we know. And he's gotten his, for all for all intents and purposes, he's he's gotten his um, his mission done of getting the Avengers to to fight each other that he did in, in Civil War. Yeah, and you can kind of understand his his revenge factor in that. I mean, he lost his whole family, you know, he did, everything was taken away from him and he, you know, something snapped and you can't, you can't say he's a good guy because in winter soldier or in uh, civil war, you know, he killed innocent people beyond yeah. the people that he wanted. I mean, like some face to face, like the Hydra guy is one thing, but the guy in the, um, in the German hotel that he yeah. takes over and he kills him and leaves him in the bathtub. Yeah. You know, so it's the, so because he's going to be the doctor that goes in, yeah, you know, and he kills that guy. So, um, taking all that into effect, who is Zemo? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy that wants to be a good guy? 
No, or... I th I think he's he is the classic case of he's not anything. Yeah. What he is, he's the kind of he's the guy who's completely committed to his personal cause. Yeah. And his personal cause might be vested only in him, but he has got specific things he wants to do. And once he's in that zone where he specifically wants to do something, nothing will stop him. But and that he's that guy. He's the guy. He's prepared to go to extremes to get what he needs to to get what he wants to get to yeah. what he needs to do. Yeah. But by the same token, he's not in it for kicks for just being a bad guy, which is why he treats Falcon and the Winter Soldier so kind of honourably, you know, and uh, and doesn't hold any he, he doesn't hold anything personally against either of them. Right. Just I I have to do this. He's the guy who can't be trusted, but he's not necessarily the bad guy. And he's the guy who, if his needs align with yours, he'll help you. Is this but on a on a, on a knife edge? He can flip into do something that's not going to help you. Yeah. Is this a case where the MCU got the character right more than the comics did? Well, I think so because it, in in the comics, Zemo is much more of a cipher. He's yeah. not really a very he's become he became much more interesting during the Brubaker era, as did every long-standing Captain America character. I mean, the the, the just, we've touched upon this a number of times, but if you go back through Captain America's history, yeah. really, there's only a handful of times when he's been very well made. So it's the the original Simon and Kirby comics which are very much of their time, of course. Yeah. You've got to remember Captain America was, you know, a pro-propagandist, anti-American se separacy uh, character a year before America got into World War II, created by two Jewish creators who were saying, look, America, we've got to be involved in the war, right? right. Uh, and so Captain America's out for a full year before that happens. And, and and then you know so all those all those Simon and Kirby issues are like watching the sun source of the whole thing. They're very pure. They're dated now, of course, but yeah. they're great to read. And then there's right. the yeah. then there's the revival series by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Yeah, which is um, when he starts being. I think it was in Tales to Astonish at first. Once he's come back in the Avengers, they start telling Cap stories. Lots of which at first are flashbacks to World War II right. with Cap, with Cap and Bucky, and they're great episodes. And you see things like the origin of the Red Skull and everything. Yeah. That's all really good. And then you have all the the, the 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 sleeper agent things and the cosmic cube, you know. And that's like you start getting people like Gene Colvin on, but it's still there. And it's a bit of Roy Thomas, but pretty much after that. While people love the Steve Englehart era, yeah. or, and that, that's good, it's Sal Buscema on, on art and Steve Englehart. And he, Steve Englehart does all this crazy stuff with Captain America. Like he has him quitting. He has not becoming nomad. Yeah. He has he has bad guys turning out to be the president of the USA, all that kind of stuff, right? Trying to have fun with it. Yeah, and, he, and it's right in the heart of the 70s, right in the heart yeah. of Watergate, lots of interesting stuff. Basically, once Englehart comes off the book, it goes through a fallow period for quite a long time until there's a brief run by Roger Stern and John Byrne, which lasts about nine issues, yeah. which goes right back to basics. That's really, really well done. Then Byrne goes off the book and uh, Mike Zek takes over on the art and Stern keeps on writing it for a while. And that's still a pretty good book. Yeah. But then it goes through another massively fallow period, like for about 25 years or so. Yeah. Now in that period of time, the, a guy who's really associated with a lot of, uh, of Captain America stories is no longer around, Mark Grunwald, right? He wrote a lot of stuff, and a lot of people have a lot of fondness for that. I particularly yeah. don't like, I personally don't like that era of Captain America right, at all, and it's not for me. I don't find it very readable. And right. it's like he's just an out-and-out -out superhero at that point. Right. Then you get Mark Wade comes back, and there's a series where he goes back to basics like Stern and Bernard done, and he creates a series um, with uh, Ron Garney on art, and that's phenomenal. Yeah. But the, the fir at first, it only lasts a year, and it gets interrupted because they de then did the rebirth of all the Marvel characters with um, with the people like Rob Liefeld getting involved. So yeah. you get this ridiculous Rob Liefeld run on Captain America, is this which like is the 90s or. Yeah, it's, this is in this is in the nineties now, which is like nonsensical. You know, it's it's yeah. not very good. But then Garney and Wade come back for a second grasp at the character. That's good. And then you get nobody of any note doing it for about ten years, right. and that's when they spun the wheel of the of the revolver, spun the chamber of the revolver. <laughs> said, "Fuck it, we'll put we'll put Ed Brubaker in. He's a great writer." Yeah. And what Ed Brubaker did was just amazing. Easily, easily the best Captain America comics 
ever, not just compared to those other writers, literally the best ones ever. And what he did was just, for that nine or ten years he wrote Captain America, he just made it a destination comic book. Yeah. And so, and so Zemo was never a very interesting character until Brubaker wrote him because he was just the guy who permanently had his mask stuck to his face I and was batshit crazy. But he wasn't very interesting. Yeah, just I need like to go a, read those. a German slash Nazi aristocrat. Yeah, I need to go read those because um, I, I I I love Brubaker's stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, he's I didn't know that you written because that's just Captain America for me. Never, just never did it. You know what I mean? I, I never... Mate, I'm telling you, you got to read the Brew yeah. Baker Captain America books. Yeah. You will love them. And of course, he broke the big golden rule. The big golden rule would be that Bucky was one of the few um, Marvel characters who had to stay dead. The other one being on called Ben, right? Yeah. It's the whole motivation. It's the whole motivation for Cap. It's the whole motivation right. for Spider Man, right? right? So those are the characters you can never really bring back. Yeah, even though they bring back fucking everybody else, right. but but you know they let Brubaker did it, and Christ, he did it. He did it in a way that I, there was an interview Brubaker's done within the last two or three weeks with. Um, he did a bunch with me, as you know, but he did some with a, a much more famous person than me, Kevin yeah. Smith, and, and yeah. Mark Bernard did, and Fat Man and Batman, and him. But Brubaker's talking about the fact that um, when it actually came time to reveal who the Winter Soldier was, it was revealed right. to be Bucky. Both him and Steve Epting were like, oh, my God, we made a massive mistake here. This is going to go down like a lead balloon. But, in fact, all the hardcore Cap fans loved it because he did it in exactly the right way. Yeah. You know, and uh, he just created that reveal in exactly the right way. Uh, and so I, I couldn't – I mean, um, uh, they're, they're, for me, my all-time favourite Marvel comics is uh, yeah. Brew Baker and Epting's run on Captain America. Yeah. And, and, you know, I have some others that are really close – yeah. Some of the original stuff with, with Lee and Kirby and Ditko, of course. And then, you know, in its time, the 80s run that Byrne did on the Fantastic Four was really good. Yep. yep. Uh, and then I would say the other Burn thing. The other, what's that? Burn is oh, great. Burn at his peak was great. He was amazing. Yeah. The, the Claremont and Byrne X-Men comics, they were oh. pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, they were great stuff. I also really loved uh, J. Michael Straczynski's run on Amazing Spider-Man with yep. John Romita Jr. I thought that yep. was incredible. And then I really, really loved um, Ultimate Spider-Man, the Brian Bendis Ultimate Spider-Man, all the original run, yeah. and then the run that involved Miles Morales. I mean, that's incredible comics, mate. It's really, really yeah. good. Yeah. But if I had to choose, that, if I could only ever read, and I had to reread Marvel comics, couldn't read any new stuff, and I could only reread one extended series, I would absolutely go for the Brubaker Captain America. It's yeah. great, and you know they're, they're just about to start re-releasing some of it, mate. So uh, just just to definitely reiterate, check it out, Kenrick. I will, I will, I want it now. Just to reiterate for everybody, the original question was: Did MCU do <laughs> Zemo better? Than- <laughs> <laughs> and and the answer is after after ten minutes of that monologue, yeah, the answer is yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They did because they kind of I like they kind the- they kind I- of co-opted some of what Brubaker did and some some of their own, yeah. Thing. Yeah, I like what they. I like that they took away the uh, the Nazi aspect of him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, and made him a made him a contemporary German, a contemporary yeah. German aristocrat. But he's just he's just so much more interesting. Yeah, once I love the fact that they didn't reveal he was an aristocrat until the, this. Yeah. Until this, you know. It only came out of Falcon and Winter Soldier. When you first saw him, they didn't know any of that stuff. You know, there's that whole stuff in episode two, which is like, oh, you're rich. Or yeah. episode three or whatever. Sorry, Kenrick, I didn't mean to talk across you then, mate. What you no, no, say? you're fine. You're fine. You didn't do that at all. It's good. Yeah, it's um uh, it was an interesting there's a lot when you think when you unpack this episode, a lot happened. Oh, it really did, mate. Yeah, it really you know what did. I mean? It one, it answered a bunch of stuff from before, but then it it's it's given up all this this new stuff that you're you can't wait to see what happens. Um Johnny makes a pretty good point. Carly has turned it the corner from revolutionary to, to criminal. Yeah. Oh, she is a criminal at this point. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's true. 100%. Yeah. And, and, yeah. um, you know, again, the, the ideology has outweighed the human empathy. And we yep. you know what happens is when people follow ideology to its ultimate conclusion, if you don't factor in humanity, you've got a big problem. And this is what always happens. Yeah. Once you start, once you start being okay with killing people for the cause, that's a slippery slope. It just always goes to the same extremes. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, what are you doing at that point? Yeah. What was your, uh, what was your favorite scene in that movie, in the, uh, that movie, in this episode? 
I mean, I think, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I've got to say, for me, it, I really loved the Valentina Allegra de Fontaine scene. Yeah, um, great. I, I, that was that for me. That was brilliant because I was like, ah, right, this is because I've been racking my brain singing. Who's a big name actor, and who's a big name character that's never even hinted at existing before? Yeah. And, and the funny thing was, the minute you saw the heels and it panned up and it was her, I was like, I immediately knew who she was going to be playing. Right. Once I saw the way she was dressed right. in the leather with the with the with the with the spiky boots. And it was, and it was, it, and it was Julie Lewis Dreyfus. I, I was like, she's got to be Val, and boom, you know, in that nanosecond, that's exactly what she was. Although uh, uh, two seconds earlier, I, I couldn't guess who it was, who it was going to be. Right, right. So that was for me was really good, and I really liked that very subtle cliffhanger at the end. Yeah. With 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 um, Sam looking inside the the Pulp Fiction, the Kiss Me Deadly style box. Yeah. Yep. And just absorbing it and taking the breath in. Because yep. there's something of huge import in that, which, like I said, I'm guessing is some kind of iteration yeah. of the Captain America costume. I think it's gonna be great. I I think you name I think you nailed the scenes that I really loved it as well. Um, you know which one I really did like though was the uh was the uh the montage of them fixing the boat. Oh great. It just yeah, makes brilliant. And the fact yeah. that Bucky just kept coming up and just Pulling using his super form. strength to do this yeah yeah i thought that was lovely too i also really loved the scene with um uh, uh bucky and sam's nephews when they wake bucky up when he's in the lounge yeah. you know sleeping on the sleeping on the sofa yeah. i thought that was a beautiful moment mate i thought it was great yeah yeah it was really good i well now we can sit back and, and wait for uh, episode six i'm gonna get it am i gonna get back and focus there we go oh yeah yeah <laughs> Um, get episode six on, which is a finale, and I got to tell you, man, uh, it's going to make me sad because they're doing such a wonderful job on these on these these episodes. Oh yeah, and I want another season. I want another season of Wanda. I want another. I'm going to want another season of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and and I don't know that we're going to get those. I think they're they've done. Up. Yeah, they've done such great work on these shows. It's clearly feeding into the overarching narrative. Well, I really, really like the time that you've, you've really spent more time. I mean, Sam was a fairly well-drawn character anyway, yeah. but because for a while Bucky had been the catalyst and the bad guy, you really had you. He really has been given a lot more to do. And Sebastian Stan is such a great actor; yeah. he's done it really, really well. Yeah, and it's yeah, he's done a phenomenal job. He's so good. And next up on the plate is going to be Loki. Yeah, starting in June, and it's yeah. like. You know, they, they did such a great job of starting this like right right after Wanda. Now they're gonna make us wait a month. <laughs> yeah, right. Over a month. I mean I mean, I imagine after the last episode next week, the, there is then gonna be an episode um which will be the a making of thing yep. they did what with uh WandaVision. Symbol. So so that's two two more weeks of things to talk about, and then a month of rest before we yep. get into Loki. Yeah, which is gonna be uh, exciting, I think. It looks. Have yeah. you seen the trailers for Loki? Have oh you? yeah, it's great. I mean, it looks like it's leaning heavily into uh, his ability as an actor, which is yeah. what, of course, they should be doing. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty crazy. And just putting him with Owen Wilson, I think, is such a great thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I'm very much looking forward to that. <laughs> Owen Wilson. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, man. Mate, I for sure. I'm already dreading the last episode of, of Falcon Winter. So I want more of it because I just feel like, like I loved WandaVision. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. That one, I can understand being a one and done the way they did it. Yeah. With setup. This one, I feel like you can give me years of this. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I could carry on seeing them doing other stuff, you know, yeah. send them out on multiple missions, doing things. I've, I've really, I thought I was going to really enjoy this show. Mm -hmm. And what you've got to remember is the state of mind. Everybody, at the end of one division, one division had doubled down so convincingly that people had gone from thinking, is this going to be any good to being evangelical about it? Oh, my God, it's amazing. Yeah. And when that finished, before everybody was like, ah, oh, now we've got to get into Falcon and the Wood Soldier. I just can't see yeah. how it could be as good as what they did with one division. But, of course, it has been in a completely different way. Uh, and, you know, time and time again, you just got to have faith in these guys who run the MCU. You know what they're doing. You know, uh, like Feige, Alonzo, um, Desposito, those guys, they just really do understand everything. What They, they get it so right. And, man, have you seen some of those training videos for um, 
Oscar, what's his face doing? Uh, doing mo- training for Moon Knight. No. Oscar Isaac. See, you now Oscar Isaac's playing Moon Knight, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can see uh, he's posted some of his martial arts kind of training videos on uh, on YouTube. They look amazing. Looking I just that. can't wait for that. He's just such great casting. Yeah. You know what I kind of want to see? And this will probably never exactly. happen. I, I, <laughs> I want to see Sam and Bucky go to some podunk tiny tiny town where everybody knows each other and they got to solve a murder mystery <laughs> oh yeah that that would be great that would be, where they barely have to use their powers and they barely think, have to use their powers it's have there. To think it through instead yeah maybe, right yeah, maybe the person that ends up being the killer is kind of overpowered and that's when they have yeah. to do everything as the revelation on the last episode or whatever L- like the superhero version of Bad Day at Black Rock, which I'm not sure you've ever seen this film, uh-uh. but it's a film with Spencer Tracy that I would totally, totally oh, recommend. Spencer Tracy, yeah. And so Spencer Tracy, in this film, this is one of his later movies, he plays a one-armed World War II veteran who goes to this small town to find uh, the non-white guy who, who like, saved his life. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and he, he's going there particularly to find him. And then a bunch of things happen. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's about he's seemingly a, an old kind of decrepit man turning up in this town full of like rural bullies. Right. And thing, nothing works out the way anybody expects it to. It's really fun. It's really good, mate. Really good. Seminal. You go watch it. Bad Day at Black Rock. Back it's a great film. Yeah. I'll check that out. I, part of me wants it to be like um, Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bucky, yeah. And, uh, that would be brilliant. It's Wouldn't just it be fun. such an insane thing to do? Murder she wrote with Sam Bucky. That would be great. I think it's just I, one. I think Anthony Mackie and um, Sebastian Stan just work so well together. They play off. They each do really well. I I kind of feel like the uh, the the seed of this show was 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 sowed when in Civil War. Oh, for sure. You yeah. know, um, it's in that scene in the car. That, that that's absolutely when it. Be, that's when it became obvious to everybody. It's like, oh, hang on, we can do something with these two guys. Yep. yep. And the scene where Spider Man uh, webs him to the ground. Oh, great! It's really good. You know, yeah, uh, that uh, that whole oh wow, you have a robot arm. That's so cool thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's all. But by the way, less than it need to be any kind of underlining of it. Makes you realize how strong Spider Man actually oh. is. Dude, well, well, you knew that when he grabbed that. Same thing in the. Um, he's way up there in the power scale. Oh, dude, he's he's more he's stronger than than most of the people that you've met on the thing. Yeah, correct. He, yeah, exactly. And he's so uh, yeah. fast on top of that. Super agile. Yeah. 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 He, I mean, he's pretty much stronger than of all the people you've had who are strength based. He's pretty much stronger than everybody. Yeah. Except uh, Thor and Hulk. He's yeah. within the MCU outside of them. He, I think he's the strongest guy at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. that whole scene with Captain America, it was only Captain America's experience in fighting that would say yeah. get his ass Correct. by, yeah. it. you know what I mean? There's always that, you know, everybody always has that argument who would win in a fight. Right. Yeah. And Johnny started saying, well, whoever's writing it. And I'm like, well, that's not the question though. <laughs> who do you yeah. think? So now I've changed it. Who do you think would win in a fight? And I always, think of batman because their batman's supposed to be the uh, the great uh what's the planner right logician yeah he was planned it all out and yeah, yeah the tactician but i tend to think that spider-man's strength and speed and his spider sense just negates anything batman tries to do no I, I i think that's true i mean i think i think cap you know steve rogers cap probably inhabits that place in the marvel universe where he can actually give a really good account of himself up to a very high level because his yeah. combat skills are so good. Yeah. And in, as it, that has actually been, and it, his combat skills and his determination. I mean, I love that scene in Infinity War oh. where where um, Thanos is, just wants to swat him away. Yeah. And it's, there's a look on Thanos's face for a second, like this fucker's fighting. I what what's going on? <laughs> and then that, yep. and then he triumphs. But the, there's a look of uncertainty that hits, which is all about Steve's resolve, right? Yeah. I thought that was a brilliant moment. You know, what's funny but, yeah. This episode, or not this episode, but this series as a whole, d- does it feel like this is very much a Captain America story as much as it is a Sam? And, oh, one hundred percent is absolutely. Even be in there, you know what I mean? It's, it's just yeah. crazy. But like, that's how Steve how Rogers. Uh, show though not yeah. not john walker not, no you know no it's a steve rogers show. and that's the thing that really effectively done is 
Steve Rogers casts a very long shadow, doesn't he? Yeah. Quite deliberately over the MCU, but they've lent into that. And I think it's one of the great strengths of the show. Yeah. I think, I, I think, Kenrick, that Steve uh, casting a very long shadow over this season, right up until the finale next week, is a good place for us to close out on this time. It is a very good place for us to close out. The long shadow of Steve will come to an end next Next or we'll, we'll, or, or we'll definitely that this chapter of Steve's shadow will will we'll close. I've got a feeling that Steve will continue to echo throughout the MCU for a lot of years to come for various reasons. One of which could be him coming back in some form at some point. You never know. That's right. You, know I mean? you well, never know. I guess all we have left to say is thanks for stopping by. And we'll see all you guys next week. We'll see you all next week. And Kenrick brother, I will see you next week as well. That's right. Take care, man. All the best. I'm trying to find my stop button. <laughs> <laughs> That's a metaphor for life, mate. <laughs> oh, I'm stopping.